The BC Residential Tenancy Branch presents an information video on security and pet deposits. In residential tenancies, a landlord may collect a security deposit and in some cases, a pet damage deposit. Landlords of manufactured home park tenancies are not permitted to collect deposits for new tenancies. A deposit is money that is held in trust as a security against damage to the rental unit. The maximum a landlord can collect for a security deposit is half a month's rent. The landlord can also request half a month's rent for a pet damage deposit, so the total of both deposits combined cannot exceed a full month's rent. A landlord can only collect one pet deposit no matter how many pets the tenant has. However, the landlord can restrict how many pets a tenant is allowed to have. This would be included as a pet clause in the written tenancy agreement. The time to ask for a security deposit is at the start of a tenancy. A landlord can request a pet deposit at the start of the tenancy or when the tenant first gets a pet. If a tenant does not pay the security or pet deposit within 30 days, the landlord may issue a one-month notice to end tenancy for cause. The condition inspection report is tied closely to the deposits. If the landlord or tenant does not follow the proper procedure with the condition inspections, they may not be entitled to the deposits. The landlord must provide the tenant with a copy of the completed report at the start and end of tenancy, or during a tenancy if a pet is added to the household. During a tenancy, the deposits can only be applied towards the rent if the landlord agrees in writing. If the landlord increases the rent during a tenancy, they cannot ask for an increase in the deposits. In order for the tenant to get their deposits back at the end of the tenancy, they must provide the landlord with their forwarding address in writing. If the tenant does not feel comfortable providing their forwarding address, they can provide a P.O. box or another address where they can receive mail, like a friend or a family member's address. Once the tenancy is over and the landlord has the tenant's forwarding address, they will have 15 days to do one of three things. Option 1 is to return the deposit in full, plus interest if applicable. A deposit interest calculator is available on the Residential Tenancy Branch website. Option two is to get the tenant's consent in writing to keep all or part of the deposits. If a tenant authorizes only a portion of the deposits, the landlord will have to return the balance within the 15 days. A tenant cannot give consent as part of the rental agreement at the start of a tenancy. The permission must be given at the end. Option three is to file an application for dispute resolution requesting an order to keep the deposits. A hearing would be held through the Residential Tenancy Branch and an arbitrator will decide what will happen with the deposits. If the landlord doesn't take one of these three steps within the 15-day time period, the tenant can apply for the return of double their deposits. Deposits can be returned in three ways, in person, by regular or registered mail, or electronically through an e-transfer. Security and pet deposits are an important part of every tenancy. For more information on deposits, please visit our website at www.gov.bc.ca slash landlord tenant.